All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah Kodash. And that's the true Hebrew names of the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Again, in the Lashwan Kodash, the Holy Tongue, the Paleo Hebrew. Uh, Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls the Most High God or Heavenly Father. And Yahweh means He is, He is to be, He exists. Bahashim means in the name. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls uh, Jesus Christ. And Yahweh Shai means he is the Savior, he is the Deliverer. Bahashim in the name. Raka Kwadash is the Holy Spirit. Again, I want to give a double honors to my apostles, bishops, elders uh, from Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this truth. And peace and salutations to you, Akim, to you brothers that's pushing this word throughout the four corners abroad with truth and sincerity. Shalom to the Akim Wa Athwas. Peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters that may be uh, tuning in, studying, and learning under the vibration of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is the brother Taz of War, Bon Aparium from the GMS Boston Camp, back with a quick lesson, back with another lesson through the Spirit, man, to hear give you warnings as the Lord prophesied, uh, uh, commanded us to, to, to give warning, to speak the words of prophecy. To his people and the word will put his words the lord will put his words in our mouths man so we're here to give you warning man again to uh, that's the job a duty of a prophet you know to prophesy man and i and we here to, to to be circumspect uh be occupied in prophecy and measuring the time diligently man and then we have uh in these news articles or in these world events what's going on we had to speak on it, to give warning, to be the news anchors for Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. We're here to relay this message through Yahweh Bashem al Rashad, man, in these latter days. And we filter them through the foundation of these scriptures, through the scriptures, man. You know, it's a faithful and living book. You know, so we're here, I'm here through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem al Rashad to give you uh, 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 another warning, man. And then I got from the headline... Uh, from I got from endtimeheadlines.org. The heading reads, Update, Doomsday Clock Will Show the World Has Reached, Quote, Most Dangerous Point Ever. Hey, man, we in these latter days, man. It's a, uh, uh, the, the earth will wax colder and cold, you know, in these latter days. You know, we at the worst point. We've been prophesying that uh, we on the brinks of all destruction about to take place and this is all through the heavenly father this is his will you know jacob's trouble is on the horizon our elder apostle to hard coin this year the hopeful year of jacob's trouble in 2024 and it's only been uh roughly a month less than a month and so much prophecies is rolling off the page man from these scriptures so much shit is happening man you know and this is why we had to co constantly be occupied in prophecy man but yes, this world, the doomsday clock will show the world has reached the most dangerous point ever. Ultimately, this is all of the will of the Heavenly Father to bring destruction on Esau, Edom's rulership and their heaven, the so-called white man's uh, kingdom. Man. And it starts from Babylon, a.k.a. Uh, uh, America, being utterly destroyed. And we're here to prophesy that it's going to be destroyed when World War Three takes place, man, by them thermonuclear missiles. That doomsday clock, these scientists, they're prepared. They're warning their people that, hey, it's, it's time for a destruction. And that's what we've been doing through through the, the spirit and power of Yahweh al Shai, that the Lord is about to bring judgment, great miseries upon the whole earth, man, in these latter times, you know. So let me continue in this article. Uh, doomsday clock will show the world has reached the most dangerous point ever. The doomsday clock edging closer to midnight will show the world has reached the most dangerous moment ever a nuclear scientist has warned. Hey, so uh, that midnight represents the destruction or uh, Armageddon, and Armageddon, you know, that's spoken about in Revelations, man. You know, the mountain of troops, uh, 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 the most high's judgment, Yahweh Shapat, World War Three. And it's going to lead to destruction of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. Continuing on, Dr. Pavel Podvig, an uh, expert on weapons of mass destruction at the UN, told The Sun that nuclear war is truly terrifying prospect and something that must be ruled out. Hey, 
nuclear war is going to take place, man. Thermonuclear missiles are going to be shot from the ends of the earth. World War Three is inevitable. Shit is about to hit the fan. And this has all been written and spoken about over 2,000 plus years ago, man. It's in the scriptures, man. The prophets seen uh, uh, visions and dreams of this great kingdom, uh, uh, great misery, uh, uh, Babylon the Great, mystery daughter of Babylon, man, being utterly destroyed. That's America. And it's going to be destroyed by the ICBM missiles, man. Uh, he warned of dangers of unstable personalities being in charge of nuclear arsenals, including Russian uh, despot Vladimir Putin and North Korea King Jong Un. The doomsday clock operates as a wake up call for the world about global threats such as nuclear war, dangerous technologies and mass health concerns. It will be updated today at 3 p.m. I believe this came out on Tuesday. So they, they announced it uh, uh, yesterday, uh, last night or uh, last evening. As scientists will reveal how close we're to the end of the world. The time currently stands at 90 seconds away from midnight. The closest it has ever been to striking midnight, which symbolized the end of the world. Again, the end of Esau's rulership. You know, we know the scriptures uh, say that the earth is going to abide forever. So we know that the whole earth is not going to be utterly destroyed. So let me get into some scriptures. Uh, let me get that. Ecclesiastes uh, 1. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 4. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. So we know that the earth is still going to uh, be uh, continuing. You know, the earth is going to abide forever. So when you see the end of the world, it's the end of Esau's rulership. Esau, Edom is the so-called white man's biblical nationality. Matter of fact, it is the, the yeah, it is Esau, uh, uh, it is the white man's nationality. The so-called white man. He, 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 he's Esau, Edom. He's the wicked that, that the Lord gave uh, 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 power to rule the earth in wickedness. Just to bring him down to destroy Again, that's the, their world is their rulership, their kingdom, you know, and it's going to be bought by fire. But this is all the will of the Heavenly Father. Isaiah uh, 54 and uh, 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waste to destroy. See, so the, uh, the Lord created these modern day blacksmiths which are scientists you know to blow the coals in the fire and bring forth an instrument uh, uh, uh wasted to destroy it's talking about them icbm missiles man what you see here on the screen this is this is what's going to take place and this is what this nuclear scientists are uh, 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 now are saying that we're 90 seconds away from doomsday destruction armageddon armagadwan Hey man, that's who through the spirit power y'all by Shem was shy, man. Starting from the servants, uh, starting from the apostles, the, the bishops, the elders, and brothers on down. We've been giving you this warning even when war didn't seem like it was uh, 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 coming around the corner. We've been prophesying this for years, and now it's coming into fruition. Hey, and these arrows, again, these holy men, the prophets and apostles and, and, and disciples been prophesying about this. You know, this third, this third world war, it's inevitable. You know, let me get that. This third world war has been prophesied and we're now about to see it. That The Lord has been declaring the end from the beginning and now the end is manifest. Real quick, uh, Revelations 9 and 12. One woe is past and behold, there comes two woes, two woes more hereafter. Again, this is referring to World War One, World War Two. And World War III is coming, man. It's coming quickly. As Revelations 11 and 14 says, The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Again, woe is destruction. Mass destruction. It's going to be of nuclear uh, 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 capabilities, man. ICBM missiles. World War III is, going to, is inevitable. This war is going to be fought but uh, with fire and brimstone. Let me get that. Um, Isaiah 9 verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. This upcoming battle, this upcoming war, 
This third woe is going to be fought with burning and fuel of fire and it's by them thermonuclear missiles, man. And again, these people in high places, these scientists, they know this. They know this. And this is why we're 90 seconds away from midnight. Again, midnight symbolized Armageddon, destruction, you know. And I did a lesson on this last week, uh, the, uh, uh, announcing that they were going to, uh, you know, update this doomsday clock. They do this annually, you know. And this is our way. We're, we're in the time, we're in beautiful times, man. We're in time where the Lord's about to visit the world which he made, man. Let me read this again back into the article. The time currently stands at 90 seconds away from midnight, the closest it has ever been to strike at midnight, which symbolized the end of the world. Uh, Pavel also said that unpredictable accidents in war zones could lead to uncontrolled escalation and warn of the deaths of billions of people. Hey, man, mass death is coming, man. That's what we've been prophesying. The slain of the Lord shall be many. The Lord's about to visit the world which he made. I'm going to continue on to this article, but let me let the scriptures come out. Um, Second Ezra. Second Ezra, I'm going to start at chapter 8, verse 61. And it reads, And therefore is my judgment now at hand. And these things have I not shown unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of wonders which thou begin to do in the last times, but at what time thou hast not showed me. Hey, the, ju the, lu the judgment of the Lord is, is soon, man. We at hand. It's, it's about to, it's about to, uh, we at the brinks of destruction, the judgment of the Heavenly Father, man. We know the major prophecies that have to take place before the end of Esau's rulership or the end of the world, so to say. We know that Jacob's trouble has to take place. The mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, has to be made manifest, be made mandatory throughout the world. And we know the uh, World War III is going to have to turn to nuclear. It's going to be a nuclear war. These are major prophecies that are going to take a place before the end, uh, 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 before uh, our Lord and Savior uh, established the kingdom of heaven. But again, you know, this is Ezra's acquiring about the last times, these last days, man. And the Lord only revealed it to a few people unlike, I mean, to, that's like uh, Ezra's, man. And, and in these, in, in, in this lot, we have it uh, through the servants, the prophets. The Lord did nothing but reveal it to his servants, the prophets, man. These mysteries, the secrets, these wonders, the dark sayings, these proverbs, these parables. We understand it because we ain't living in these latter days. As the scripture says, that knowledge shall increase in Daniel's, man. Second Ezra 9 verse 1, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest parts of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Man. And hey, this is this is a, a, a form of measuring the time diligently. Again, news articles. What's happening around in current events and what's happening around the world, we filter them through the prophecies of the scriptures, man. And this is how you can be circumspect. This is how you can be on point to be a watchman. It won't catch you off guard. It won't catch you as a thief in the night because you understand and you've been watching, man. But those that don't want to take heed to this warning, those that scoff and scorn and think that, oh, we're where this is make believe the Bible is fictional or we're conspiracy theorists or we're spewing hate or we're radicals. Those that little bit of uh, uh, unfaithfulness is going to lead to your destruction because you're supposed to take heed and fear your how about Shem and repent because this is all in the hands and the will of your how about Shem let me continue on in Second Ezra, the verse three. Therefore, when there shall seen, so like, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars in the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those thing from spake, spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, man. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So the Lord left these signs, these clues, these wonders, man, you know, for us to measure, to know we in these latter days. You know, let me get it on uh, Matthew. It says uh, 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 wars, but I mean, what I just read in Ezra's, 
It says uh, uproars of the people and earthquakes in diverse places. You know, let me double down. Matthew tw uh, 24 and um, I'll start at verse. I'll get right to the point. Verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, man. So this is part of the signs. The Lord left these signs and wonders, you know, of nuclear war. You know, there's 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 tension that's happening with with these uh with these major kings and princes of the world. They've mentioned in this article uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, King Jong Un. You have all these people in high places getting ready and prepared for war, as the scripture says. And this this war is going to lead to deaths of billions of people, man. Let me continue on into this article. He told the son the number of nuclear weapons that exist, they would have the potential to, to end the life as we know it. And the numbers are truly terrifying. It runs from the tens of millions of people dead in that in the matter of hours. And I've seen estimates that suggest that the consequences like the nuclear winter could lead to death of billions of people. I've seen the simulations and estimates and the numbers that could be 40 to 50 million people dead in a matter of a couple hours. So it's truly terrifying prospect. That's something we want to rule out to make sure that this could never happen. Hey, ultimately, you can come up with these PD, uh, treaties, these meetings. Ultimately, you're gonna, you gonna you you think they're going to upset prophecy, but it's not of your will. This is not of men. This is of the will of Yahweh Bashem Shai. The Lord's going to put in these in the in the heart and the lahab of all these other rulers and kings to get prepared for war. This is going to take place. Doomsday is going to happen. There's nothing you can do to upset prophecy. Let me get it, um, Joel. Chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Hey, these other nations are now turning their plowshares and pruning hooks into swords and spears. Mainly with the, the ICBM missiles, the thermonuclear uh, 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 warcrafts, man. And war missiles, they're getting prepared heavy artillery into the arsenal of, of, of to fight, man, to go to war. So it's inevitable. There's nothing that these people in high places can do to to stop the prophecies of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Verse eleven: Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Yahweh Shapat is the most high's judgment, man. Yahweh's judgment. And it's also referring to Armageddon, man. Or Armageddon one that's spoken about in Revelations. You know. Put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision Again, this is all This war is going to happen And it's going to lead to the destruction Of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America But the valley of Yahweh Shapat The Lord has these armies, these other nations Going into what they call So-called Middle East Man, they're going to be They're going, all going to be going to war, man and the Lord's going to destroy all these militaries and, and all these mites, man. And ultimately have all these nations shoot their, their arsenal, their arrows at Babylon the Great. Let me continue. Revelation 16, verse, um, verse 14. Uh, For they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of the Most High Almighty. Behold. I come as a thief. Blesses he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. See, he's coming as a thief for those that's not paying attention. Those that are not aware. Those that don't want to take heed to this warning, man. 
You know, you got to you, bless is that person that read, that watch, that's being occupied in prophecies, that keep of his garments, that understand this truth. That got the garments represent this truth, man. The prophecies, the understanding, man, of, of what's going to take place. Lest he walk naked and they shall see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon or Armageddon. And that's mountain of troops. And this is what that doomsday, we're 90 seconds close to it, man. We, we're, we're in these latter days, man. World War Three is going to take place. And this, this, this war is going to lead to Babylon being utterly destroyed. And it's going to be that lake of fire, you know. This is what John the Revelator uh, spoke about. Uh, Revelation 18, verse 8. Because it says uh, in the article, right? It said in the article that... um, so like, yeah. Uh, let me see. It said it could lead to deaths of billions of people. And it could be 40 to 50 million people dead in the matter of a couple of hours. Hey, it's all scriptural, man. It says it here in Revelations 18. And uh, I'll get right to the point. Revelation, Revelation 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. That she is referring to Babylon when you go up to to verse 2 is referring to Babylon the great is fallen is fallen so let me read that again in verse 8 therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning see they're going to uh, uh, they're going to see the smoke of her burning because these missiles is going to cause this, man. That mushroom cloud, that besom of destruction, that fire, that, 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 that sweeping agent of that fire just sweeping across the whole country, you know. And this is not going to be a test. This is not going to be a drill, man. You know, this is not a test. When this takes place, all hell breaks loose. These arrows are going to be shot from their silos and ain't going to be nothing to hold them back. There's nothing to stop them. Once they hit Babylon the Great, this is going to be the, uh, the outcome, man. Those, that not, uh, uh, those that's not going to be delivered in a chariot from the destruction of Babylon the Great are going to be burnt, man. You know? So, and these other nations that's that, that in these other countries... Are going to be well and lament once they see America having that lake of fire and being utterly thrown down. Verse 10, Revelation 18, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Hey, alas, alas, also is woe, woe, that great city Babylon, destruction to uh, Babylon the Great, man, to America. Let me continue on. Same chapter, Revelation 18, verse 20. Uh, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Most High have avenged you of her on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So this is all biblical prophecy, man. That great city, America, is going to be thrown down. By these thermonuclear missiles, man. By the arrows that's spoken about in Ezra, uh, uh, Jeremiah, Malachi, Joel, many prophets, Isaiah, many prophets seen the destruction. John the Revelator, you know, they seen the destruction. And it's coming, it's coming to America. This right here, man. So let me, I got there, I have another article, kind of similar. End time headlines. Uh, and, and this is from uh, November 14, 2023. A few months ago. This is uh, from Newsweek.com. The heading reads, Nuclear attack worse. Worst case scenario would see 90% of Americans wiped out. Well, hey, when these missiles are shot off, the whole... America is going to be a lake of fire. It's going to be utterly destroyed, man. You know? 100% of America is going to be utterly destroyed. So those Americans or Babylonians 
that travel or that's in other countries, then, you know, they're going to escape the destruction of America, but they're not going to escape the hands of the Lord. Anybody that's occupied in America is going to be destroyed. Besides the elect, the elect of Israel, the remnant, are going to be beamed up in a chariot with the world will call uh, a UFO, an aerial uh, phenomenon, uh, unidentified um, flying object or a, a, a UAP, uh, unidentified uh, aerial phenomenon. Those are the chariots of the Lord. And that's how the Lord's going to deliver the elect in the air. He has to literally lift up the elect and, and put them in their chambers and remove them uh, from the earth once uh, Babylon the Great is being destroyed, man. And we don't care if you don't believe or you want to say bug outs or whatever. That's what that that's the faith that we believe in that our, the Lord and Savior is going to deliver. And I pray that I'm found worthy for this be found in that hopeful elect, man, to be in a chariot to have that aerial view. Like in the press box, like if you go in the stadiums, you go in the press box and you see, you know, an aerial view of the event or the sports sporting event. That's how the Lord is going to have the elect being put up in the chambers and, and having that aerial view, seeing the destruction of Babylon the Great, man. So, again, there's a new another article because, again, multiple news outlets are now speaking on this nuclear war, man. You know, and it's inevitable. And this is the the Lord, the works of the Lord, man. His spirit is going to be poured out on all flesh, man. Nuclear attack worse case scenario would see 90% of Americans wiped out. As if nuclear strikes on U.S. cities weren't potentially damaging enough, an attack on American missile silos will kill millions due to acute radiation poison in, matter, in a matter of days to spread radioactive fallout across the country, New Marlin suggests. A study published by Scientific American on Tuesday found that if a strategic launch base was hit, most of the Midwest would be bathed in more than a lethal dose of radiation. With a worst case scenario seeing most, you know what, I'm going to say it through the spin power, Yahweh Shem Shah. The worst case scenario or the great best case scenario, all America is going to be utterly destroyed. And it's going to become inhabitable because it's biblical. It's biblical. It's going to become uninhabitable. What's that? Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13 and, um, you know what? There's so much. You know, I, you know I'm going to start at, I'm going to start at verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his fourth in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Ultimately, because we know the day of the Lord is darkness is not light. Ultimately, thermonuclear missiles, these arrows, and, and you know the smoke from the burner is going to blot out the sun, blot out any type of light. It's going to be bringing destruction, man. Verse eleven, and I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. That man who's uh, more precious than fine gold is the men, the elect, man. The elect of Israel that are not going to be caught off guard. They're going to be having this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be keep them stable in these latter days. But to everybody else... The Lord is going to come as a thief in the night because they're going to be in gross darkness, not knowing uh, what's going to happen. Ultimately, because they didn't believe, they didn't have any faith, they didn't repent, they didn't trust in the Lord. So the Lord is going to destroy them. He's going to make the land desolate and he's going to punish the wicked for their iniquity, as I read earlier. Huh? So that man that's going to be uh, precious than fine gold, again, it's a, it's a remnant. It's only a select few. It's the elect of Israel, man. Verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. And the, the way that the, the, the earth is going to move out of its place and the, the, the heavens are going to shake is by the impact of these arrows, them thermonuclear missiles being shot from the ends of the earth, man. It says the, uh, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, you know. 
in the in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. It shall be as the chase roe and as a, a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall turn every man to Salakia. Then shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword, man. Hey, man, everybody that joined hand with Babylon, with Esau, Edom, in this wicked way, you're going to be utterly destroyed, man. You're going to be thrust through with the sword, ultimately them thermonuclear missiles, man. Their children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes. Behold, their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Uh, behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard their silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls are also shall dash the young men into pieces. Them, them thermonuclear missiles, them arrows, man. The Medes is representing the uh, uh, modern day Russia. That's where uh, the, the, the Russians uh, occupy this, the lands of the Medes, man. But again, their, their bows, which is them arrows... The bow and arrows, they're going to be shot from the ends of the earth, you know. And Russia has the most arrows out of all countries, man. They're a major uh, 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 character, a key of this uh, upcoming war, man. Uh, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not even, their eyes shall not spare children. And here's the point. In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. The beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for its filthy uh, uh, acts, you know, for their perverse and profane acts, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah by fire and brimstone. And he's saying this is how Babylon the Great is going to receive the same judgment, man, by that fire, by them thermonuclear missiles, man, them arrows, them bows. It's going to lead to this is going to be a uh, uh, ground zero America of uh, that lake of fire, man. I read that again. Isaiah 13 and 19 and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellency shall be when the most high overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And I read that in this article. It says Seeing in the U.S. and Canada becoming uninhabitable. And hey, that's what's going to lead, man. This upcoming war is going to lead to the destruction of Babylon the Great. And it's going to lead to the end of Esau's rulership, his heaven, man. And that's straight to the point. And, uh, you know, I pray everything was edifying. Hey, we won, we one step closer, man. You know. That's why it behooves you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to get right, man. Take heed to this warning. Repent. Seek the Lord, man. Change your ways, man. Be cleansed and be baptized by hearing the word. Be washed from the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Seek him ten times more, man. And pray. Pray to, you know, in these latter times, man. Don't, don't, don't put off from day to day. Let me close off with that. Because if we're giving you this warning... And we know there's going to be a famine of the word soon. There's going to be a time when you can't hear this word or get take heed to this warning or, you know, and, and go on and log on and hear the prophets. So it behooves you to, to seek the Lord now while he may be found. Don't wait, man. I'll get it. I'll close out with this. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So it behooves you to take heed, man. Take heed to this warning and, 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 and be on fire, man. Be on fire, man. This should be your major priority right now, man. Because the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, man. And we at, we, we're one step closer, man. So with that, again, I pray everything was edifying. Again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders, and brothers on down from Great Millstone, who rule well and taught me this truth, and peace and salutations to the Bayaf Dawadah, the house of David, the elect. Until next time, I want to say, Shalom.